everyone. Welcome back to Basic Claims, our casual you. conversational comedy podcast. I hate you. 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 I'm Tory Boatboy Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> if we keep going, you see, you can't stop us because it's international waters. I'm. I'm. <laughs> what is Tay going to take legal action against us? <laughs> I'm. I'm Tay, full of hate. Adams? Yep. I'm Tyler. Tyler. Why'd you ask me your last (laughs) name? Because I never say my last name on the show. I'm Tyler. Still don't have a nickname yet. Yeah, we're working on it. We're about, working on it. We're in the we're in the we're in the middle of a of a development process. You know, we think you guys are really gonna love what we give you. You know, we got our dev team on it. You know, we're really excited to show you this brand new exclusive mobile only adventure for Shapeless Gaming. All six mm-hmm. hamsters. It's on our it's dev just. Team. It's just, you know, we're going mobile exclusive. Hey, everybody. Okay. We're Epic Store exclusive now. Yep. So This is Baseless Claims, our bi weekly casual talk fest. I was screaming, I hate you, over Tyler's introduction. So if you didn't hear that, there it is. I like our casual conversational comedy podcast. That's the new one. Yeah, you, you're just going to hijack that I'm going to hijack it. I'm well. Mm, uh, I was gonna make a joke, but let's. <laughs> I think we all know. Where <laughs> we all know where the hijacking. We all know the <laughs> hijacking <laughs> joke. Yeah, uh, it's it's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm hijacking the intro. I'm gonna say it's our casual conversational comedy podcast. Con- okay. Casual conversational comedy podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. CCCP. Oh my god, you you clever motherfucker! You like that? You absolute clever motherfucker! I don't get it. That was what the Soviet Union abbreviated to in Russian. CCCP. Yikes. Yikes, Tyler. You like that? No. Nope. That's really good. <laughs> you absolute clever motherfucker. I am so impressed with you right I now. I have galaxy brain. <laughs> the biggest I see, brain. Every, I see every outcome that can and will be. <laughs> yeah. Um, you do, you're just And on this fire. is the only one where we have a conversational comedy podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Master of comedy, I made an abbreviation. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Master of comedy, smarts of none. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There we go. So the other, so the other day, I was driving home in traffic, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I do that. It's so relatable. No, I need you to stick with me on this one. Okay. okay. There was. <clears throat> It's Minnesota. Construction's everywhere, folks. Yeah. Let me set this scene for you. They literally shut down an entire Let highway. Me set the, what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> bit are you doing right now? Um, and motorcyclists can be a bit reckless, right? Yep. They're mm-hmm. swerving in and out. And, and, you know, when you're in stop and go traffic, you're like, oh, fuck. Like, the last thing I need is just, like, a wild card motorcycle driver. It's one of the guys with the big old handlebars that sit up really high. Yeah, you know, Tyler, do you have something that's really funny right now? Guns don't kill people. Motorcyclists kill people. What the <laughs> thing? You made a good joke. I hey, like that one. Did you one. know that the the size of your handlebars is directly proportional to how low of an IQ you have? Mm, so this guy, dumb. <laughs> no, high IQ. Like, the higher it goes, the higher your IQ. No. Oh. No, it's an inverse. No, he said inverse. Yeah. So. Yeah. I so them them sons were like up oh, there. He's dangling from him at this point. He could do chin ups on him if he wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know he's typical biker look. He's got like the cut on, like the you know like the leather jacket with no sleeves, and he's got just two sleeves of tattoos and just trying to look like a real badass while also wearing dad jeans. And as the traffic kind of went and I scooched up and got closer to him until I was right next to him, I look over and see that his tattoo sleeves were indeed. Sleeves, the ones that you buy at like a Halloween store and pull over no. your arms. Yep, he was wearing two fake tattoo sleeves. Beautiful. That's amazing. Wait, but here's yeah. the thing. I hate to kill the mood. Yeah, but I have seen people do that as like because they got like third degree burns on their Ooh. arms. I hate to kill Ooh. the mood, but he might have had third degree burns on his arms. I don't think so. And he what if what them. if those are his public tattoo sleeves? <laughs> and then <laughs> he's got <laughs> private tattoo sleeves. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Once he gets to the 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 fucking white supremacist bar, he's like, all right, these puppies come off, and there's just all third Reich yeah, shit on his they're arms. Just, yeah, they're they're his his sleeve sheaths. <laughs> Well, no, no. Honey, honey, I need my business sleeves. Can you, can you go in the, Where's my business sleeves? I put them in the washer. Oh, don't tell me you dried them. That's going to shrink them. No, well, they, they only cover like, <laughs> yeah, it's like right over the elbow. Yeah, they don't yeah. show the big ass goddamn like swastika swastika yeah. on the wrist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like what the fuck is he? What the, you, what the you fuck know what is this guy doing? You know what burns else burns aside? <laughs> burns aside. You know what else would have uh, completed this picture of this guy who is definitely a biker poser? What? Who is actually an accountant at Wells Fargo? Yep. Um, he has candy cigarettes. Yep. <laughs> He's got those ones, those cigarettes you can buy that had like powder in them. He's you, smoking Smarties. 
Yes. Uh-huh. That yep. would be, uh-huh. Okay, but yep. that would actually be... That would kind of be impressive if he could, like, you know, do the, like, smarty roll thing, like, while he was on his mm. bike. Oh, you, you roll up that up good here. smarty split? Yeah. Like, imagine the the dexterity it takes to, like, roll a smarty while you're, like, mm-hmm. biking. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I don't have anywhere to put it right now. Oh, wait. Stuck it right in his tattoo sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think we all need to, I think we all need to face the fact that we live in a reality where tattoo sleeves might be the best storage compartment that we have. Pockets yeah. out of date. No one wants to use those anymore. Stick your phone in your tattoo sleeve. There you go. And and you look st- fucking dope as fuck when you do it. You yeah. do. If you and stay a distance away. If you are the one who wears female clothing and you wear in shorts that don't have pockets at all, mm. even though they've got the seam for it. That is a crime against humanity. Oh, right in the sleeve. The fact that female pants mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. don't have pockets is a crime against humanity. It is. It is. It is is taking away human rights from an entire, like, fuck, what, like 50-some percent of the population? Mm -hmm. Like, the population that is wearing female jeans that does not have pockets, they are getting their human rights stripped away, and I think we need to talk about that. You know know what it is? It's a racket to sell more purses. Oh, Ooh. so big purse is behind it. Yeah, big, big purse. Big, big purse. Well, yeah. no, it's not just big purse. It's big purse and big jean. Who <laughs> <laughs> come together and it's like, hey, we got an agreement. Yeah, man, I'm big jean. And then and then big pharma gets in there and they coat the jeans with Oxycontin. So, so you're addicted. Uh, so yep. what you're saying is that women need to, instead of purchasing those, they just need to go to the store and buy two leg fake leg sleeves. Pant fake, legs, fake pant legs of tattoos. They need do to buy they pant legs individu- of tattoos. Do they Legging. sell individual? <laughs> do, like you know, they have to have the individual sleeves for the arms. Do mm-hmm. they sell individual sleeves for the legs, mm-hmm. like leg warmers? What, what sort of covers the center area? Then they could just be leggings that have well, it it's design uh, like tattoo design. It's a on it's a steel plate to make sure that no one can penetrate mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. Um, and it's bulletproof. It is bulletproof. It's like far more protective than it's a steel. It's a steel leotard. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it it's also like it's not pressed up right against it. It's like a couple inches away again to leave space for Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's, that's where Jesus lives, kind of right in that, <laughs> sort of sort of right in that region. That's, Jesus, Jesus kind of lives like it's not. You would think it's between the <laughs> vagina and the butthole. No, Jesus lives in the space like just outside. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like. And like a few millimeters away from your labia, that's yeah. where Jesus lives. Yeah, Je- I know what a labia is. And there's Jesus a- <laughs> sort of Jesus Jesus sort of orbits the clitoris a little bit. His his Holy Spirit likes to stay there where it's warm and where it's See, safe. That's what that's why female orgasms aren't as common as male orgasms. It has it's nothing to do with my ability. It has nothing to do with my ability. It's that Jesus keeps Jesus getting in the way. fighting my dick. <laughs> Jesus is fighting my penis so that I cannot give her an orgasm. And you know, he's keeping everyone pure and yep. godly. And that is why the female orgasm is less common or fake. There's a, there's I also a, believe that. There's a little door on the steel leotard where Jesus can poke out and be like, hey, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Get out. No, like a dick is coming. Like, Get out of here. <laughs> or like a hand or literally any like. Je- Jesus any is like kind of bodily part mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. Jesus isn't down with. He's like, Get out of here. And he starts punching. Yeah. Jesus Je- also from Boston. He He's kind of, he's from Boston, but he is also similar to like one of those old farm dads that sits out on the front porch with a shotgun and like someone rolls up and he's like, chick, chick, what you doing around these parts? <laughs> think you're lost, friend. Why don't you turn around? And uh, when, excuse me, where is the pussy? Back the way you came. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I knew, pal. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to have to get out of town. <laughs> this, you you're see this turn- labia? <laughs> this is, this is kind of my territory. <laughs> You have to turn that car around, and go right back. And Ain't up, nothing for you here. And up the street where the clitoris is, oh, there's three more of me. I'm gonna go back into my cave now. Now, um, <laughs> rolls the stone in front. Of me. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> that's where he got lost for three days. That's where he was. It's because he couldn't find the clitoris. He was lost. He was looking. Oh God. Jesus just could not find it. Even the best of us can't find it sometimes. <laughs> it was like an ice pipe. <laughs> Yeah, 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 uh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. But the those kind of, of uh, this podcast is just me shrieking. This is, a, this is like a the, it, maturity this is a very level informal rough start. Yeah, 
Maturity very level? Rough start. <laughs> absolutely sure. rough start. Usually, you know, yeah, I, absolutely, because usually we're talking about highly mm. intellectual things. Of course, yes. Like, remember the one time we said that uh, semen loaded Bibles and it <laughs> shoots cum? Yeah, that's a good, that, see, that's mature. That's, that's, where, that's, that's high art, Tyler. That's where we want to be, is yeah. right up there. That's, yeah. yeah, that's where we want to be, but right now we're just Jesus kind of orbiting the labia. Yeah, yeah normally there's... normally we at least give some info. Like, when we, when we read a 10-page memo about the new 2019 series, Sierra Denali. <laughs> yeah, you know, usually we're, at least we're very wa- informative. At least you walked away knowing a little bit about that big old car. Yeah, yeah. Well, and we'll how much the, the broad-shouldered car. Sorry. Yeah, yes. and how much the guy who wrote it wanted to fuck this vehicle. Yes. So we've been doing this for, we've been bullshitting for about 10 minutes. Does anyone have something? Yes. I got lost s- almost everyone at this point. I got someone. I got, I got a baseless claim here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was thinking about this because... My girlfriend flew to Las Vegas for a video shoot, and then I looked up Las Vegas just to be like, what's going on? Like, are there any, like, good shows? Maybe she can catch something cool. And I saw that Jerry Seinfeld currently has, like, a, uh, what's that called? Show. A That's show. A stand-up? Yeah, like, uh, like, he's got a residency. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In oh, Las okay. Vegas. So... Oh, dude, good, I was good, good for him. He, he went through the whole DMV process pretty quick. I was... Then I started to worry, like, oh, no, what if Jerry Seinfeld fucks my girl? Like, what if Jerry Seinfeld's out there and he's Mm -hmm. Jerry Seinfeld is going to cuck me? And then I was like, wait, what if Jerry Seinfeld is already doing it? Mm -hmm. So my baseless claim of the day is that Jerry Seinfeld fucks army wives. Okay. And he wears the late husband's uniforms because the husbands are all gone. He mm-hmm. wears the late husband's uniforms while he does it because he's disrespectful, okay? Mm-hmm. And this is this is the start of my personal vendetta against Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld, you have 48 hours to respond to me, okay? So Jerry Seinfeld wrapped in an American flag. Picture this. Okay. He's cucking the entire, every branch of the army. Mm-hmm. And he's just, he enjoys it. That's why he's in Las Vegas. Is he just cucking them by fucking their wives? Or are they full dick and cage on their knees? It really is up to Jerry's mood that day. Okay. You know, Jerry well, sometimes he, he's... <laughs> Tyler, Tyler, Tyler did say the late husband's uniform. But the rest of the military... Well, I think there, he's live streaming. No. I think he's live streaming to, like, the Pentagon <laughs> or something. Living. Wait, hold on. There's a very important detail that I want to get right. Are we talking the cast of the TV show Army Wives or Real Army Wives? Real Army Wives. Okay. I know we all love that very good CBS show, Army Wives. Everyone everyone loves Army Wives. Everyone loves Army Wives, mm-hmm. but I'm talking real life Army Wives. Mm-hmm. So that's my baseless claim for the day is that Jerry Seinfeld fucks Army Wives. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he does it with malicious intent. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to reverse engineer this. Okay. So, <laughs> yes, it's a baseless claim, but I want to figure out the thought process here. What? makes Jerry Seinfeld so appealing to the female, I was going to say race. <laughs> <laughs> to the female army wife population? Yes. R slash army wives. R slash army wives. You see, what they love about Jerry Seinfeld mm-hmm. is his, he's just a pure-blooded American. He's like, real, through and through. He's just a real bear. He's just a bull. Well, I mean, it's it's mostly the fact that, like, when you think of <laughs> When you think of patriotism, when you think of America, you think apple pie, baseball, Seinfeld. Those are all very American things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jerry Seinfeld taking advantage of that. <laughs> With his short hair, he looks like Matt Lauer. <laughs> <laughs> Matt could be also Matt Lauer. Could be. Could also be Matt Lauer. But Jerry Seinfeld is the one with the residency mm-hmm. in Las Vegas. And why do people go to Las Vegas? To fuck. Yes. True. Yes. Because we yes. all know what happens whether, whether in Vegas destroys your life later. That's true. That's the saying, right? The pit boss comes and gets you. Jerry Seinfeld is the pit boss Holy of every sh- casino. Dude. That, okay. That's okay. how he's so rich. Okay. We all know yes. he's a billionaire. Yeah. Dude, you can't be saying that Holy shit. shit. Yeah. I know we're in I know we're in international waters, international podcast waters. But Jerry right Seinfeld now. will kill you. Yeah. yeah. Jerry Seinfeld will hop in on this podcast, live on air, and fucking murder all of us. Holy especially shit. you. Yeah, he's going to take his sweet time with me. So yeah, so he'll like, kill both of us first and then make you watch. Well, no, that'd be, well, that'd see, be, that'd be a gratif- that would be a gratifying situation. Yeah, for, you. for me, it'd be like, haha, last one standing. Yeah. So it's like three years after these these army wives lose their husbands and they want to take a girl's getaway. They mm-hmm. want to go to Las Vegas and see Jerry Seinfeld. They get up there. They take a good long stare at Jerome Allen Seinfeld. <laughs> right. Yep. And 
I'm they, glad he went with Jerry. I'm and, glad he decided on Jerry. <laughs> yeah. And immediately, you're saying there is an attraction that can't be broken. I think he's hey, more babe, manipulative. Have you lost a yeah. husband? Oh, okay. Recently? So he's, Jerry's so it's, more it's manipulative. It's not that he's irresistible. It's that he really works the clay. He, yeah, he molds. He molds a story for them. He's like mm-hmm. Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld is stolen valor. He lies about time in the service. Jerry Seinfeld is claims he's a Vietnam hero, mm-hmm. but. As we all know, Jerry Seinfeld is a liar. Yeah. Is he? Could I get sued for libel? Yeah, yeah probably. probably. I mean, I know we're in international waters. Yeah, I know we're in international they waters. They legally can't arrest me if I keep talking about Jerry Seinfeld though, on the podcast. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Fun welcome fact, to our last episode. That yeah, we'll fun carry fact. On for we have time. been recording for straight two weeks, and we've just been cutting in and out mm-hmm. um, of the footage because Tyler is a wanted, wanted cyber criminal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, oh. we, so we have to keep recording, and we only upload every two weeks because that's just the easiest way to do things, but... The thing about Jerry Seinfeld's Army Wife cucking that really upsets me is the fact that to keep it as legal as possible, he also, like, is recording it in, like, a sort of podcast form. It's also going uh, mm, on Twitch, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. It's yeah. actually, he's, he's actually streaming. Able to, he's live streaming it to Netflix, which is, it's the first time they've done it, but they had a big contract with them, and it's uh, it's called Army Wives and Cars Getting Cucked. <laughs> It is exclusively in a vehicle. He is under contract to keep it in a vehicle. <laughs> and a, and the, the vehicle always has to be moving. You ever see that movie Speed with Keanu Reeves? Yeah. <laughs> if it goes under 80 miles an hour, it explodes. If, okay. it goes, if, if the car goes under 80 miles an hour, Jerry Seinfeld can't nut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if it's a car goes under 80 miles an hour, he nuts immediately. Mm. So the, the, the intense speed is kind of keeping him edging. Of course, of course. He has to be going 81 miles an hour. At all times. If he goes 82, he hey, nuts immediately. Babe, once this once this bitch hits 88 miles per hour, you can I'm see. gonna nut. <laughs> <laughs> he just has that on standby on like a button in the back of the fucking He's got his boys in the back of the car nut, like with a nut, 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 nut. Can we stop talking about Jerry Seinfeld now, please? Yeah, that was a stupid bit. <laughs> Yeah, that was fucking stupid. Stupid fucking show. Oh my god. So I went to a club last night. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. There was a uh, a DJ was there, playing. Was there sex, drugs, and rock and roll, baby? Absolutely. Uh, there is a <laughs> got him. A, a little, a little performer, you know, by the name of Nero, who was there. Mm. Promises mm-hmm. that you know. like um like the chosen one from the Matrix. Close. Actually, yes. Um, but anyway. Boy, howdy, clubs are fucking wild. Yeah, clubs uh, are disgusting. A, oh, oh, Nero, the Roman emperor, was there. Yeah, oh, that guy. Neo, you should have said that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, one thing that happened uh, at like 10.30 before Nero even was like there, because he opened at 12. Oh, um, Jesus. That's past at, my bedtime. Yeah, at 10.30, this couple decided to go fucking nuts to the opener DJs, and start grinding and twerking in front of Jay and I. Mm. And boy, howdy, they were basically... You got a show? Yeah, they were basically having clothed sex two feet in front of me. Yeah, I... And the, getting closer. Mm. Yeah, the... the How sweaty was the atmosphere at the club? Oh, super sweaty. You were you were very moist. Oh, and Hella it's so sweaty. glittery. Clubs are so glittery. Mm-hmm. It's, what, it's, mm. what, where was it at? Uh, it was called The Exchange. Oh, yeah, it's in the mm. basement. Yep. Have you been there? Mm. Yep. It's oh, a no. nice venue, isn't it's, it? It's very nice, but yeah, it's it's where a lot of EDM stuff is. I, well, it's baseless claim, so I'll just completely generalize. Yeah, go for it. I hate the EDM community. Ooh, that's a bold claim. Hate it. I've, I like to play this game called Rave or Rodeo, where I look at what people are wearing, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I decide, are they a country person, or are they going to a rave? Because there are a lot of similarities. There are no similarities. Pigtails, Rave, or Rodeo. Oh. That's, you have to look at the rest mm. of the outfit. Booty shorts, Rave, or Rodeo? Uh, are we talking Aren't rave? Like, that'd be like leather shit, wouldn't it? Raves? Not yeah. necessarily. There's like a couple different archetypes of rave goer. There's the, there's the leather. Mm-hmm. There's the goth, and there's the fairy girl, and then there's the the, the hick who who just goes happen- to Electric Forest. Fairy uh, girls, poor people. <laughs> Okay. And they oh. spend it's, all of their money at Electric Forest, and then they tweet the rest of the year about, oh, can't wait to go back to the forest. Yeah. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. was so magical. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
I really expanded my mind while I was there. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I have seen. It's, it's I have like seen Burning non-sar- Man for poor people. Yeah, I have seen non sarcastic posts about how like, oh my god, like the base at Electric Forest was life changing. Like it literally like inspired me to like change my life. <sighs> yeah, like, fucking nerd. Do you realize how like, like yeah, that's great and all, but like. That's that's the same thing with anything. It's like when you say something so lame, it's like, God, do you realize how lame you sound? <laughs> that type of person is it they're basically they talk about like the base and like electric forest as as some people talk about crystals, where it's like the base resonated at such a frequency oh God, that it right. transformed my right. person. And that upsets me yeah. quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Cause what, like when I go to, when I go call to, themselves dumb shit too, don't they, don't they go by like I'm a candy cunt or something like that? Like I'm not kidding. I think that's a thing. I I would believe you. I don't want to Google Candy Cunt though. Also, I, I think it is. I think it is. And it's also, basis. <laughs> we are literally <laughs> protected it, at all. We are literally yep, protected yep. from every angle because we call it baseless. Yeah, because like the reason I go to raves or like EDM stuff is to listen to the fucking music and shit. That's why I love Dead Mouse. I love the music. When I get there, like the last time I went to a Dead Mouse concert, I was standing right in the prime location to see all the graphics on the cube and shit, and I was just you know staring at it, having a good time, you know, bouncing back and forth with the music. Oh yeah, that's and a some, lot of people, but we're generalizing here, Tay. We're generalizing. Yeah, I know, but some 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 douche can came up through the crowd he's like yo bro you tweaking i was like no i'm just enjoying no, the music he's no. like fucking rad dude because he didn't hear me and then he walked away <laughs> sick bro yeah yeah it's um it's, it's not a type of god just the thinking let's about call it what it is it's sweaty people fucking in tents in the forest mm-hmm, yep hey tori yeah what would your dj shtick be if you were a dj oh fuck because there's a lot of people that do like helmets and stuff and like mm-hmm, different mm-hmm. masks and stuff like that like that marshmallow guy love Fortnite, you know i love it um what would my Fires. shtick be so like i was gonna say suit but there's probably people who are suits there are okay. you could do but a fur I suit can, i can Ooh. no i would i would rather kill myself i think oh than that um, um, but I can't imagine because like even Nero, Nero is wearing just like like a plain T-shirt. <laughs> he's he's wearing a toga because he is the Roman emperor. <laughs> mm-hmm. He was wearing a plain T-shirt and like a jacket and jeans and a, a Pharrell hat. Okay. Oh, okay. that was weird. Yeah, yeah that's he, a bold move. Yeah, he's just wearing a Pharrell hat. Only Pharrell can wear Pharrell hats. Yeah. And uh, he was sweating like two seconds into his set. Mm-hmm. And he was very sweaty the whole night. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm. So my shtick. Not mm. to, not to. No, I want to. I want to know. Yeah, my I stick. Inspiration. Uh, very wearing very little clothing, cat ears. Done. Okay. My shtick would be I'm going to call hmm. myself Nero, but instead of like DJing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set fire to Rome and then I'm going to like play the harp while it burns. Mm-hmm. Kind of like is as like taking inspiration from the original Nero. So mm-hmm. like I don't do shows. I just. Once they rebuild Rome, I just kind of burn it down mm-hmm. every like five years or something. Okay, right. so not well, every day because Rome was built in a day. Yeah. So mm-hmm. now that Tyler is done reading the Wikipedia article for Nero, uh, yeah, what is that, I had to confirm it was Nero. Yeah. That was now the that he sort of got that, oh, I don't know what I, I, I don't know. Like for some reason, it's in my mind just wet. Like I think I'd be wet a lot, <laughs> but I don't know exactly with what. I don't know what would be making me yeah. wet. Um, maybe, maybe. Oh, I'm a construction boy. And I'm just wearing like no shirt. I'm like oiled up. I got like some fake dirt I have to put on before every show. I got a hard hat, but I take the hard hat off and throw it into the crowd. You know and I'm even, just sweaty, like slick. You know what's back even hair. better? You know what? what's even better? You could play purely industrial EDM, Ooh. which is a genre. Ooh, yeah, that's what you can do. Like I would make all my sounds by like recording, break like or dancing. I, I would be like concrete hitting each other, and I would just like mm-hmm. manipulate the frequencies, and I would be like. I'd be legendary if, if okay. I just don't wanna. Let's also be very real about yeah. like EDM shows. Mm-hmm. Like most of the songs are prepared unless they're doing live mixing. They really are playing it out of their laptop. Like mm-hmm. yeah, that's like the music making process is much more intense. But like the live shows, it is just playing it off the laptop, right? <laughs> right. And then you can is a live MacBook mix. an instrument? <laughs> yeah. Uh, ha, 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 ha. But uh, that's what you sound like. You know, right once now. you once you get to a certain Loser. point. Uh, of being a good, you know, EDM show showman, show show person. Yeah, it's all about being a show person. Yeah, like you get, you get into mixing and shit, and you got those like pioneer decks. Mm-hmm. That's when you know you fucking made it. Is when you have those pioneer decks. Um, That's when you know you find. It. If you still have a, if you still have a laptop in front of you, yeah, long way to go, kid. Like my thing would be, so I just kind of like I walk out in my swimsuit and I hit play on the laptop. And then, like, my stage design is, like, uh, you know that, like, infinity staircase that, like, never ends? Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. the so, MC Escher shit? Yeah, so what I would do is I would make that but a water slide, and oh. then I would kind of be on a water slide Whoa. the whole time. And, like... 
people are like rocking out and I'm just like constantly in a water slide loop. Mm -hmm. And also, like I, I, I have like one of those like okay. rafts and shit. That's really good brand commitment. Cause I'm trying to think of like, oh shit, I could make an experience out of this. Right. Yeah, exactly. What's better than going to a show and having the show like extend off the stage and be part of like the entire thing. Right. A water so for park. me, you, that like, you could have a water park for construction boy. It's gonna you put the highways under construction. Put the so when they go home, you know, it's really inconvenient. <laughs> yeah. And then they it takes forever to get there. They finally make it or whatever. Uh turns out that the ticket takers are down to one lane. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna take a long time oh, to get into fuck. the show. And Hope you're not also, late. Yeah, it's that's also that delayed. Way. It's also like you never get stuck. <laughs> yeah. There's like two people like standing around on like a shovel, just kind of like waiting for you to yeah. show up. <laughs> and then in like as like an art piece, I'm gonna have two people like just laying on top of each other in really weird ways and be like, there was an accident. Yeah. It's really <laughs> slowing shit down. I'm really sorry about this. Uh, you want to take an alternate route? Ooh, all the uh, entrances to this highway are also closed. So. You're stuck. Ugh. That sucks. Yeah, and then I just start oh, so you make it really. <laughs> so you make it like really inconvenient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do, is I would make it a very, very inconvenient thing, but once you finally get there, the show is... So worth it. Oh, so good. So yeah. good. But it, it does take like two and a half years to get It does to take a very, very, very long time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you do to extend your experience? To extend my experience? I don't experience? know if I want to know what your EDM experience. Oh, God. I give um, catnip to everyone. Yeah. Dude. And they all have to pet me. Yeah. Oh, that's. Wow, you got it. And give me butt smacks. Oh, that's. You uh, got that's, it. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of assault cases just like piling <laughs> up right there. Not if it's part of the brand experience. Yeah, but the, the cat. <laughs> I don't think you can put it under the guise of like, it's not assault, it's a brand experience. <laughs> no, if, that, if, if every show, Tay goes out into the crowd and people pet and butt smack Tay, that's not assault. Oh, no, no but yeah, no, I, I consented was thinking, to it. Yeah. No, I was thinking like Tay, like rubbing up against people. Oh, oh my God. No, God yeah. No. You'd have to, you'd have to go to people's legs and like <laughs> <laughs> rub against them. Yeah. See, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> and the opening song to every show is a really, really cool EDM version of you giving like legal consent. The I, lyrics are just like a very legal statement, but yeah, you put like it with like super cool auto. Yeah, you're like you're like octaving the fucking like <laughs> lyrics and like fucking distorting them and doing the the, the like if this legal agreement <laughs> and it's like just all samples, all that, <laughs> and then it'd be like, and then at the end, you guys agree. And then they all like, <laughs> yeah. How's everyone doing tonight? Yeah. Do you guys that, give consent? Yeah. That's legally binding. Legally <laughs> 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 binding. <laughs> <laughs> These are purring. Yeah, there's actually no bass drop. It's just purring. <laughs> oh my god, that would be my shtick. Never a drop. There's already it's there's all, there's already like five people that that's so it's like oh, do, 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 because you know it's like thanks for coming out tonight guys yeah there's all been great it's i unfortunately that is already taken who is dj blue balls that's good look i just hate raves because of the glitter how do they get that shit off does like every rave person just have like an industrial strength shower head yeah you have to have a fireman blow it off of you yeah, there's fire people outside. It also will take the top layer of skin. Good for exfoliation. Part of my, bad for health. Part of my brand experience, I just thought of this while I'm on the water slide in an infinite loop. Mm -hmm. The song I play is an infinite loop of Baby Shark. So it's just oh. Baby Shark. Doo -doo 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 -doo. You better jump on those rights real quick. Because that's is, public domain now, isn't it? I have no idea. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what that Shark. song is. Oh, so. it's, it's, it's the most like ear gratingly ear gratingly like it'll stay in your mind forever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like so it's better that i don't know it's it. better that yeah, you don't yeah, know right. it because I'll, I'll otherwise keep my, you I'll are, keep my ears virgin you are you, blissfully ignorant yeah. you will you will be just like in your office like video editing and then just baby shark yep it's gonna happen mm -hmm. oh boy well i'll steer clear of that one yep. man what's it like to have virgin ears from the baby shark song it's it, it feels good i mean i've liked my life so far pretty much you know what i don't like though is that we're all at this age, just amorphous, disgusting, stinky age where we have to become adults and we don't quite know how to, how to well, like, okay. So not that we don't know how to, we know what we have to do, but there's a lot of shit that's starting to suck, right? Well, like there's just a lot starting of to suck. Just becoming like a self-sufficient adult, but Sorry, I'll tell we you, watched, we watched 2000 people die live on the television in 2001 and things haven't gotten better, but here's the, you know what? 
All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to continue with it. I'm going to continue with it, even though it's, now I'm going to sound real shitty. The most annoying thing is having to make phone calls to make my own appointments for shit. Because every time I call a doctor, I have this crazy anxiety thing. Like, I'm like, I'm not prepared. Like, I need to be at home with everything, any, any document in my life available. Because I always feel like they're going to ask me some question that I just don't know the answer to. They're going like, to ask you, what like, is, what's, I, the, what's the serial number on your modem? <laughs> like, yeah, I, what's I, the last three digits on the latest Taco Bell coupon you that, have? That's, I'm scared that I'm going to be like, yeah, I just need to uh, make an appointment with uh, Dr. Bob, and they're going to be like, okay, and what insurance do you have? And I'll say what insurance I have, and then they'll be like, okay, and just before we get going, who was the 23rd president of the United States? <laughs> and I'd be like, uh, fuck, <laughs> click, uh, click, uh, fuck, um, Grover Cleveland... I have no idea. I, I have no idea. <laughs> Did I get that right? Just Maybe. off the top of my head, do that. I just like that shit. President. Hate it. Benjamin Harrison. Ah, See, no yeah. one remembers Benjamin Harrison. Yeah. I didn't even know we had a president named Benjamin Harrison. Mm hmm. Yeah. You learn something every day, folks. Yeah. Welcome to Baseless Claims, our <laughs> educational podcast. Our educational comedy podcast. Um, yeah. Like, so what are the things and what are the things about becoming an adult that have been the biggest, like, system shock to you dude fucking insurance and anything to deal with cars fuck that mm -hmm. this last weekend i had my car die again okay um okay uh i had catalytic converters go out on my car <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um and just dealing with all of that shit is the fucking worst calling a tow truck a process mm -hmm. calling the insurance to see if anything's covered and finding out that it's not a process yeah. finally getting it to the repair shop and o owing them a shit ton of money for a bit of metal also bullshit yeah and then them telling you hey it'll be done today and not getting it done for two days also bullshit yeah fucking i sucks. think the thing that sucks the most is like once you kind of like Everything seems really hard because you amp yourself up that it's hard. But then once you do it, it's like really easy. You're like, why didn't I just do that? Yeah, two days? Well, that's yeah, the yeah. thing is like, and, and that kind of goes with anything. It's like mentally getting it started. It's always like once you're doing it, like it might suck, but you're just kind of doing it if you just keep pushing forward. But like the m mentally getting into it, like this is going to fucking suck yeah. so bad. It's really hard to like push the, that and get yeah, and that's started like, that's like how the the thought process is for me like cleaning my fucking house even is like too or i i, I wake up on a sunday at like nine o'clock in the morning like well i gotta do this today it's gonna mm -hmm. take all day and i get my whole house you know spick and span and it's like 12 30 and i'm like oh yeah. shit that didn't take yeah. long at all like mentally was yeah. more difficult see the the <clears throat> thing that's the most like yeah it's like the mental preparation but the thing that sucks even more than that is like when you get yourself like mentally prepped and you're like, okay, I'm just going to do it. Realizing that things take fucking forever. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. not because they are inherently like a laborious process, but it's just like, okay, I got to call and get this thing set up. And it's like, well, you're going to be on hold for 35 minutes. And then Ugh. the actual process is going to take like 40 minutes because they have to confirm all your information. Mm -hmm. And then it's another 20 minutes because something always goes wrong in their system. Yep. And then the next day, it's another thing of just like, oh, something went wrong again. Well, this is another hour and a half phone call for something that should take five seconds. Mm -hmm. So it's like not being able to do everything yourself as like, oh, I just need to like turn this thing on. Got to call someone for that. That's going to take like an hour and a half. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's just for shit that like, that's why I try to do all of my fucking like menial shit by myself. So like, that's why I learned about computers. Like, oh, the internet's not working. Well, I can fix that because of the router and shit, no, right? Yeah. Not always. Not, not, always. not always. Yeah. But like, you know, for little shit like that, right? Like, oh, my vacuum cleaner broke. Well, I'm going to rip it apart and see what's wrong and fix it. Because I just don't like fucking dealing with that shit. Also, it costs a fuck ton of money to have someone else do shit for you. It does cost money to have someone do shit for you, but the thing that sucks is when you know how to do something and you just need someone else to do it That's because they even have to worse. activate it. And it's like, I, I've been on the phone with Xfinity for a total Ugh. of three and a half hours over the past, like, 58 hours mm -hmm. and uh those motherfuckers have turned off my modem twice now mm -hmm. and i'm you just gotta, like you gotta you gotta get your own modem you gotta oh, i have my own modem there the lies the issue there no, 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 no. lies the issue the, the one that they provided you no it's my own modem 
Oh. And the whole thing that they're turning it off, they're turning it off because it's not an Xfinity modem. What the fuck? I have my own like modem router combo, and I've had no issues. Mm-hmm. They keep turning it off, and they keep trying to sell me their modem. And I'm like, look, guys, That's I know shitty. you turned it off. Just turn it back on. And they're like, no, you have to have one of ours. And I'm like, no, uh. I don't. Modems are pretty fucking universal. You know what else? Okay, welcome to the shitting on ISPs section of the show. Um, you know what I fucking hate about ISPs? Specifically Comcast and Xfinity. They they don't know anything. They intentionally leave all their salespeople and tech people like horribly undereducated about what they're doing. So when you tell them it's as easy as pie, they can't do that thing because their playbook tells them, uh, just tell them to unplug it or sell them a new thing. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's one thing. But the other thing is, so if you stay with them for a year, you know, they're like, you know, a 12 month contract, blah, blah, blah. At this price, the next year they'll raise that price, right? Cause that's just what they do. It's a shitty practice, but you know, what's even shittier. I had, I called the lady on the phone and I was like, Hey, my bill is higher than it should be. I am, you know, in this tier for my internet, you know? And she's like, Oh yeah. After a year, that price goes up. I'm like, well, can it fucking not? Cause it's the same service. And she's like, what I can do is just re-sign you up for a brand new one-year contract at the same price. And I was like, hold the fuck on. So you're telling me that just because I stayed with you for a year to continue the service without calling you, the price goes up. But if I do call you and reset it, it goes back to the original price. Yeah, it's stupid. And she's like, yep, that's it. I was like, that's fucking stupid. Stupid. It's egregious. Yeah. It is so goddamn stupid. I hate ISPs. Yep. And please, Google Fiber, I need you everywhere. Yes. And, and, and it needs to be a human right at this point. Because what the fuck else are you going to do without internet? Can't Nothing. find a job. Can't pay your taxes. Can't do a bunch of shit. No. We live in a world that is trying to throw the brakes mm-hmm. onto the modern world. Yep. It needs to be like your fucking electricity bill and your water bill. It needs to be cheap, and it needs to just be a thing. It needs to be through the city. Yeah, that too. <laughs> That's illegal. Yeah, <laughs> fuckers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so y- y'all ever... Um, uh, uh, Keep uh, going. Keep going. Do two going. more us. Dig it. Dig two it. More Find us. something. Find something. You're right there. Yep. Um, Three um, more us, um, and we're in. Um, y'all Red Dad Centrum, is that something? <laughs> y'all ever get nervous <laughs> watching TV shows? <laughs> What the fuck does no, that even mean? No, no, mean? no, that's interesting, actually. It, g- give me an example. Sometimes I get anxiety attacks watching MasterChef because they're trying to make something within an allotted time, and it's like, no, you can't fry chicken in only 30 minutes? You mean, like, what reality TV is designed to do? Yeah. Where it's just like, all right, bakers, you have 10 minutes left, and someone's like, I haven't even put it in the oven yet. It's the oven's like, not even preheating yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, God. You, you fucking bullshit. But then it's like, well, thank God we have this brand of oven that preheats instantly or something and it's all just one big advertisement yeah. i get really nervous watching master chef the thing that makes got, me nervous about master chef is when they're talking or not even master chef but like any chef when shark. they're talking when they're cooking no they're talking to you while they're like fucking doing like the chopping they're just staring at you but they know exactly how like exactly how to do it yeah but they're doing it so fast and like so thin that's what takes a master chef that's what takes gordon ramsay that that shit is like Whenever they're trying to, like, attempt to make something or, like, I get really into it when it's just like, oh, I won the first challenge today, so I'm going to screw over Jessica by making her make an eggplant whatever or something, Mm -hmm. like something very difficult. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, not Jessica. Jessica could be a top contender. No, Mm -hmm. Jessica went into this competition to feed her family with the prize money, you bitch. Yeah, exactly. I get really (laughs) invested. Mm -hmm. I've also gotten really invested in, have you guys ever seen Ink Masters? Mm Mm-hmm. No. Fuck, that show is so good. Oh, is that the the tattoo one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Fuck. Because then people will just start like, it'll be like really good or like someone will stay in the competition and you can tell that it's just like scripted and shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That like this person's staying and it's like, what the fuck? You need to get rid of John because John is a shit artist and this person is like way better and they're more talented in all these different areas. I, I just it. I just don't like reality TV, so I tend to avoid it. Or when I do watch it, I just make fun of it the whole time. So what? I don't feel anxious. What I feel anxious about is actually like story driven shows. Like I was watching Shira the the third season. Fucking shit gets wild towards it's, the end, and I got super anxious. I I get anxious because I it's not about like the show itself. I get anxious thinking about 
how laborious the process of editing those shows must mm-hmm. be. And then I get real nervous because it's like, oh man, they were filming for like 12 hours straight and they got to cut it down. Think about the people who have to edit Survivor. Oh, fuck that. They have like 26 cameras. Hundreds of hours of yeah. footage across all these cameras and like just the amount of data, like holy shit. Mm. I'd, I mean, during the Battle of Winterfell, I did chew three nails down to the point that they were bleeding and I forgot to breathe to the yeah. point where I got dizzy. I did. I did forget to breathe and drink. Mm-hmm. It was it was Fucking very intense. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have called Didn't you. Didn't you just there. bring up an anime? It's a cartoon. It made where? I. Th- that's a good question. I I think it's America. Sure it is. No, she she is a she is American. That sounds American. Yeah. Oh God! Now I'm racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotcha, bitch. Oh no. <sighs> you How want to talk about Shira? Uh, she dash Ra. Um, it's the Netflix one, not the old one. It's a reboot. Okay, well, I'm yeah. not going to get into it. Is, yeah, yeah. is Shira He-Man adjacent? S- same same universe, yeah. And same universe? Yeah. The He-Man cinematic universe? You know, Masters of the Universe. What? Oh, shit. I, I don't know, know that? I don't know anything about He-Man. I just know that he wears dumb things, and I do like the villain, which is just a skeleton. Yep, Skeletor. Yeah. Yeah, no, like... Uh, I am not nice. I love that meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that it's... Meme. Uh, he used to be a part of a thing called Masters of the Universe, and... I don't want to spoil anything for She-Ra, though, but yeah. they leave it open-ended to maybe incorporate He-Man eventually, and that's fucking cool. What reality series well, can we make? Who would play live-action He-Man? Ooh, I like that question. What reality series can we make? I don't care Answer about your He-Man question, anymore. it'd be Stone Cold Steve Austin. This is true. Very good. Okay, yep. moving on. Yeah, moving on. That's the end of that bit. Oh, God, what reality TV can we make? Guys, I think we're pitching to the networks. We're getting... A reality we have full budget we can do whatever we want what reality series is shapeless making dude i got it okay yeah. we do a reality tv show series mm-hmm. about producing content for shapeless but i feel like a lot of youtube already does that they do but not to the extent that we will scripted we- fake drama no house of girls no 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 even we better, date one Tori. of them at a time and we send them home and we tell them all kinds of it's, it that becomes is, the bachelor that is flavor of love yeah it's yeah the flavor of the bachelor. That's what we're gonna do it. Mm, yummy. <laughs> it's a lot of infringement. <laughs> yep. No, we have a camera crew, uh, like a, pro- a professional, like like camera and sound guy following us at mm-hmm. all times. Mm-hmm. All times. You sleep in, they're there, cameraing. Oh, no. You shower in, they're there, cameraing. Oh God. Yep. I did get this that's idea. our reality TV. I did it's get like this idea from somewhere yep. else but I can't credit it because I think it was just like on Reddit somewhere. But I can't credit it because it's my joke now. It's I'm, my joke now. I'm funny, man. <laughs> no, uh, I was, I've been thinking about this the last few days because someone had the idea of what if we made a reality TV show about people who have not interviewed for a job in 30 years and they only get to use their own advice to like interview for the job. Like we'll just walk up to them and ask for a job. And we just have a reality TV mm-hmm. show oh, I that see. follows these people in a job hunt. So basically, you just want to yeah. you want to fucking dunk on boomers. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> but how? And that's what it's called, dunking on boomers, dude. And then we get these sponsored motherfuckers, by Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, these motherfuckers to sponsor us, Dunkin' Donuts. Uh-huh, uh-huh. America runs by dunking on boomers. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just picturing someone. He's 80 years old. And it's just him taking advice that he would give like his grandkids or Think children. Think of the mm-hmm. shittiest advice that your parents and grandparents have given you uh-huh. and then watch them try and enact that advice in the modern world that they have had no contact with in like 30 years. Yeah. They have zero relevant things to say. So a reality show that follows them. Tyler, yep. this has a, this has the potential. This has legs. To TM, be, TM, TM, no, TM, no, no, TM, TM. To be very like we could do this in a lot of situations. Like we could start it off. Like the first season is maybe, well, I guess it would be the first four seasons, but it's 
boomers like to tell you how important college is all the time, but they don't fucking know. Like back in my day, it wasn't we important. We send boomers through college. We send boomers through college. It's super easy. They have laptops, right? Like you have the TM, internet. TM, 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 TM. Then after they graduate, if they graduate, it's one of those things where there's like a hundred boomers. Job it's hunt. <laughs> Holy shit. They there's a job are applying hunt. for like one job, but then and they, they like show out. they show their degree and they're like, yeah, we don't give a fuck. What can you do, guys? What's this your is experience? this is a literally and then, and then the best part idea. is that at like the end of that season they don't hire any of them they just bring up an internal candidate <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes 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 this is a perfect show holy shit we, we got we it. still gotta call it dunkin on boomers though dunkin on boomers because oh we have to God. get dunkin donuts in on this absolutely yeah. holy shit this is the this is the best idea we've oh ever had man. on baseless claims and then after that they have to redo a job hunt mm-hmm. but then in the meantime because they they spent all of their money at school and partying. they have to yeah they have to find a different like part-time job so then they have to manage like working that job but also finding time to like one live their life and two apply for jobs that are relevant to them like mm-hmm. a full-time salary position yeah so then a few seasons are dedicated to like watching them try and like make that mm-hmm. balance yep. of like okay well I need to apply for a job, but like I don't have a lot of time to do that and like set up interviews and everything because I'm already working mm-hmm, at a job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then well, it's just a constant cycle of like all these interviews getting their hopes up crushed. And yep. then like once a month, they have to come to some gathering with a bunch of actors who are going to treat them the way that our grandparents and boomers treat us. So they walk in there and be like, yeah, well, it's experience, or they'll, they'll talk about like young their people. cousins yeah. being yeah. better than There's them. Yeah. Young people, no, it's it's. Well, all, you got a laptop, don't you, Grandpa? Yeah, <laughs> it's all young people that are working in high paid positions, mm-hmm. like things that they want to do, and they're just like, yeah, well, I mean, I just did this, like this is how you're supposed to do it. Mm-hmm. But none of the none of the young people are like actually giving them any like good advice or anything. Yep, they're just kind of like saying really general things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And to, to iterate, you said they were all competing for one job. Yes. I think it would be better if they, if before the show even started, they had an interview process and they were like, hey, what's a job you think is an easy breeze through college and an easy breeze through the workforce? Oh, flipping burgers at McDonald's. No, no, no. Like, okay. oh, artists or, <laughs> okay. oh, those people who play video games for people online and shit like that. That would be cool. Have them get abs. What's that big, like, what was, like, the biggest esports game before it was, like, Rocket League and all the other ones? It was, like, two. StarCraft? Dota something? 2. StarCraft's a big one, yeah. StarCraft's a big one? Okay. So, like, oh, uh, they were just playing video games. Oh, fuck. Throw them, throw <laughs> them <laughs> in a lobby <laughs> with, like, the top StarCraft players? Some, some South Korean pro. <laughs> uh, can you imagine what it'd be like if... You, like you sit you down can't an 80-year-old and you have to explain the meta of StarCraft oh to an 80-year-old. He doesn't even know what a fucking keyboard no, is. No, he's got to <laughs> figure it out on his own and he cannot get up from that chair until like he ends a game with a specific amount of points. Mm-hmm. His brain went AFK back in Nam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very, very good. Very funny. Very, you made a... I made a I made you a made joke. A funny. I made a funny. I, I said it. I said it. We can move on. Here's the thing: is that this show <laughs> never ends either, because it's a constant cycle of mm-hmm. them like getting their hopes up and then having them crushed, and then we see how long it takes them for them to fall into a deep depression. Mm-hmm. And then we can like, then the host can come out and be like, "Boomers, now you know what we've felt like since we were 12." <laughs> Ooh, and then <laughs> oh, and and when they finally like get an entry level position, they've been doing they've been doing a good job saving. They found like cheap enough rent, like they, they're doing good and stuff like that. And then maybe they want to buy themselves a dog. And then the when they go to show the younger people the dog, they're like, oh, can you afford that? And then we'll kind of like snidely talk shit about yep. them around there like I, don't, I guess he can afford it i don't it's, guess it's none of my business but i don't know if he can afford it and like, he must at, be able to he bought it. it's none of my business and then after two years we give the dog cancer <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that. Don't That's like animal that abuse. I don't like it either. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, yeah, but Why, I mean, it's called Duncan on Boomers. Here's the thing: it's though, a fake is dog. That we give them. Ah, uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> it's a robot. We dog. give them no safety net. 
Yeah, no, we none. do not get. We do not allow them to take any assets previously or anything. They have to start from <laughs> scratch. And also, they think it's like starting from a zero sum game. No, you're starting at minus fifty k. Yeah, like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because you're in school debt. Also, they don't have parents to rely on <laughs> either. Yeah, because they're all old. Because they're all old. Yeah. I think we're onto something here. I yeah, think no, this I is, think we struck mega gold with yeah, this one. Yeah, I think I think there are like several shows we can like branch out from this idea too. Because like yeah. that esport one, that's a whole other show on itself. Yeah, that's them thinking like, oh, this will be easy, and then mm-hmm. what, like, dude, the South in, Korean pro team just fucks them up. Oh, absolutely. Infin- there's like infinite jobs that they think are easy, and then and then every time. One we of the have boomers says like, like yeah, but you times. you already had that money or yeah, you had college paid for or yeah, you had and then uh, our response to everything they say will just be, well, yeah, we earned it. Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh, that's good. That's good. And we I, I I'm envisioning a spinoff show where we have them just do like it's like dirty jobs with Mike Rowe. Mm-hmm. But instead, it's just jobs that they think are easy. Yeah. Can, like can, flipping burgers at McDonald's. OK, let's put you in a drive through. See how long you last. Yep. Can Mike Rowe host it? Absolutely. Can micro be, who's the guy who hosts all of the bachelor and it's associated brands. What's that guy's name? Ryan we C- need someone Ryan more, Seacrest. No, no, we need someone more demeaning. Like someone, to, we need like a Gordon Ramsay type to like yell at them the entire time. Demean. Like that's a fucking cover letter. No, it's not. You didn't even mention relevant experience. <laughs> uh, Danny DeVito. <laughs> No, that'd be too funny. <laughs> that would be too That's funny. That's too comical. This isn't funny. No, we need someone to fucking yell at them. Still I mean, as much as Steve Austin. Still oh, Steve works. Austin. <laughs> or, or if we, like, I, I, as much as I don't like the guy, we could just get Ricky Gervais to just be a condescending asshole the whole time. Yes, he would yes! be very good at it. Ricky Gervais would be perfect at that. Ricky Gervais would be perfect. Basically, snide remarks. Basically, watch his last stand up. He's already bragging about how rich he is the whole time. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he'd be perfect for the job. Yeah. So, like, he's following the boomers around. The boomers decide, like, yeah, I passed my my exam this last week, so I'm going to treat myself to a Starbucks coffee. Ricky Gervais is in the back, like, can you afford it? You can afford that, yeah. <laughs> Tyler, <laughs> yes, you have a question. Pierce Morgan. Ooh. Just the most condescending motherfucker who has ever lived. And he's just like, well, oh, the entitlement that you have that you think you should have a job. Ugh. Like, he's not like funny or anything. It's purely just because of how fucking condescending mm-hmm. he is. It, and he's not even doing it in a comedic style. He's just an asshole towards these boomers. Yep. Ben, but Ben Shapiro. Holy oh, shit. my God. We get Ben Shapiro to do it. Ben Shapiro teaches poli sci at this college that they go to. Yes, yes. We gotta, th- we gotta. Throw- and it's, the, it's the only, it's the only respite that the boomers have. They're like, finally, someone who makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but then at the same time, oh like they're trying to like get in with him or something, or like, oh, can you help me get a job or something? And he can provide no help. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. like it's got to be just. No one gives them any assistance. Oh, you got to pull yourself up here, bootstraps. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, uh, you'll need to be doing this. And then, oh, fuck, I, I'm living for this. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, we euthanize everyone. Because they're over 65. Because they're over 65. <laughs> All right. What do you say we euthanize this podcast? Also, TM, 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 TM. TM, TM. TM. This is intellectual <laughs> property of uh, uh, shapeless media. Yeah, well, because we're never us. ending this podcast. Um, oh, right. Right. We're just, we're we're just, always just on going the air. dark for two weeks. Yeah, we're yeah, going dark yeah. for two weeks, but we're constantly podcasting, so they can't take it because we're continuously podcasting and that would be illegal. Right, exactly. Uh, somehow connected. Yeah, I haven't somehow. taken a shower in months because we've just been sitting here on this mm-hmm. podcast shit. Mm-hmm. Like all mm-hmm. these all these stories and shit that you hear us talking about like, oh, How work. are you guys getting shorter hair? How are you guys mm-hmm. doing that? Because I, as we can tell, like over the podcast length, like my hair keeps growing, but mm-hmm. how do you guys keep it kind of intact? Well, when you well, go I to ha- when you go to the bathroom, I gnaw on Tori's head and he gnaws on mine. Uh huh. Okay, so it's kind of Tay like, eats my hair. <laughs> it's kind of like the monkeys like picking at. It the, tastes like strawberries because uh-huh. it's red. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot, Ginger. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you so much for watching another yeah. episode of Baseless Claims. Uh, Find us on anywhere you get. Why, why am I saying it? You're already watching it or listening to it. Um, check out the YouTube channel. Check out the YouTube yeah, channel. Absolutely. That's going to be uh, youtube.com forward slash shapeless gaming. Uh, if you like the content there, you could subscribe there. Subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to this. Mm-hmm. Follow us on Spotify, all that kind of stuff. That really helps us out. Uh, just gets the word out. Also, mm-hmm. if you have friends that you think would be interested, they have a similar sense of humor. I think it's 
you know, show them, show them something. We do little cutouts on Twitter so you can yep. I was, check those I was out. Just about to say, follow us all on Twitter. We're all mm-hmm. on there and shapeless as a whole is on there. If you just want to tweet the conglomerate that is. Yep. And you can find all of the details for that, whether you're watching on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, like all of that stuff will be in the, mm-hmm. the sort of description or show notes or whatever you want to call it. You're so a millennial. We're, we're you'll easy figure to it out. Find. Yeah. Unless you're 75, in which case you're dead. Don't, don't, know, how, don't know how our sense of humor <laughs> landed have, with you. Well, no, we lost our only 75 year old viewer. Like, 20 minutes ago in the podcast cardiac arrest (laughs) as soon as as we mentioned dunking on boomers he was like and then he died (laughs) oh no they owned me (laughs) 